Hello, this is Michael Wojak with the Rochester City Council update for April 20th, 2015. Relatively short as I'm up late and I've got to get up early, but a um, few things going on. First of all, the uh, 501 building passed with um, very heavy taxpayer subsidy put into it. It's um, 84 units on top of retail. In general, a pretty good looking building. Um, they received um, 48 additional units from the City Council um, worth you know, 10 to 12 million dollars. Um, they received alley rights to build over the alley to cover up the alley and build underneath the alley, you know, probably, you know, worth some and also setting down the, um, set, um, also um, saving some expenses on doing two separate buildings. And then finally, the one that just blew my mind, um, on top of all of that, there was a um, $1.7 million tax increment financing scheme that we entered into. And we actually approved that one, and this blows my mind. We actually approved that one without actually seeing any justification for it. Um, staff told us that they had had a letter. Um, so anyway, um, 1.7 million in taxpayer dollars, poof, gone like that. Um, there's, you know, TIF is basically where um, when property values increase, you take a portion of that and give it back to the developer. Can uh, make some projects go, but uh, typically you want to get something back in return for it. We certainly didn't in this particular case. and. Um, you also want to make sure there's a but for clause. In, in other words, this building's not going to happen if we don't give the subsidy. And that's where I thought this was particularly lacking. This was a um, at least a double digit rate of return for the um, for the developer. And then you throw on another um, you know, and this then then you give um you know another 1.7 million dollars on top of that. So it's pretty frustrating when that kind of stuff happens. Um, we didn't get a single unit of affordable housing for that. We didn't get any amenities needed in the. Uh, Downtown, we got some retail space, which is probably going to create um, dozens of jobs requiring more affordable housing. Um, poor decision, um, in my opinion, but it is what it is, and we move on. Um, at least this time, unlike the Oliver, the city council did not deliberately break any laws. So this was this was a difference of opinion as opposed to overtly breaking laws. Um, you know, I, th I thought the case was well presented, and it's going to be a nice addition to downtown. But um, you know, problems that I have, you know, covering up alley, creating dark spaces like under Wells Fargo, yucky. Um, you know, I, I don't like um, roadways um, cutting through pedestrian spaces. I think that's dangerous. Although this was greatly improved, and the one that really annoyed everybody, there is going to be an enormous five-story blank wall facing Soldiers Field. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. $15 million of incentives and subsidies and we get a five-story blank wall on the side of a building in our downtown DMC high standards forget about it um, other than that uh, pretty pretty um, uneventful meeting energy action plans going forward we got an update on comprehensive planning earlier in the day um, other big one I guess was the senior center um, rec center and um, again there were some <laughs> by my by my numbers the uh, yeah, the, it's now about a $28 million project with about $25 million coming from taxpayers in one form or fashion or another. Um, of course, uh, there were some people who like to play some mathematical games and deny those figures, but um, if it's part of the project, it's part of the project. Big thing is, is um, they're asking us to take a million dollars away from um, everything um, from, from our unrestricted funds, which is how we fund everything. It's how we maintain our credit rating. That's um, your property taxes go into there. That's um, police, fire, a lot of um, non-capital infrastructure, parks, libraries. That all comes out of there. And it's just, we haven't budgeted for this, and we haven't had any public discussion of this, but hey, let's pull a million dollars out of there. And um, the council kind of said no. We said, yeah, go ahead with the project, but we're not comfortable with the funding. And what I, what I throw out is, um, there's, uh, the senior center has a couple of parking lots, probably worth 600000 or so, and um, I'm a little bit irritated with as much as we put into those projects that they're expecting us to buy these um, properties from them. Uh, now, as a result of this $1 million, we are expecting them to give those lots to the city um, to help offset that $1 million loss from our uh, general fund uh, revenue. And then in addition to that, um, that should lower the number uh, a little bit, and we're hoping uh, we'd like to either these do this through a loan, and if not through a loan to um, beneficiaries of the facility, then perhaps we do it um, um, just through our regular contingency, but um, at least we're not pulling it out of the unrestricted funds right now. Frustrating that um, this was done so quietly in the background, and uh, the excuse given, well, costs escalated. Well, we had the same 
situation with the Mayo Civic Center at the same time, and that one came in a million dollars um, under where we had expected it to come in. This one, you know, came, came in um, a million over, so I don't think that that's necessarily the whole cause. So it is what it is. Um, I'm going to I'm going to bed. Um, so so now that we've given away um, uh, you know another another piece of our dignity downtown, um, I guess we'll uh, go on. I you know ultimately we're doing a lot of activities and planning, but it, uh, ult if the city council just wants to do whatever they want to do, um, nothing's going to stop that. Besides. You know, you know, getting more people that are willing to say, no, sorry, I have standards and we're not going to do this. Um, one last thing on that 501 building. They're going with the standalone air conditioner heating units, the magic packs. That is so unbelievably tacky. The one good thing about DMC is when the projects are seeking DMC funds, they're going to be able to, um, they're going to go through that process and then think, God will have the governor's appointees helping to uh, stop some of the uh, <laughs> stop some of the projects, stop some of the madness. They have people that are a little bit more. Um, they've seen some good projects in the past. They know that Rochester doesn't need to lower their standards, um, and that's going to be real good, I think, to uh, teach us. They're going to teach us real quickly that when you say no to bad designs, you end up getting good designs. Um, as long as we keep saying yes to these mediocre designs that bend our rules, who cares? Um, so anyways, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.